please welcome Simmons Board Chair Regina Pisa. <laughs> Good morning. Um, thank you for being here on this beautiful um, New England fall day. For those alumni who are returning after a long sojourn, welcome back. It's been a long time since we've been able to convene like this due to the challenges of COVID and the pandemic, and I forgot how much I missed it. We have a special program planned for you today, a program centered around community, the Simmons community. We have much to be proud of and much to celebrate. Against a challenging post-COVID environment, Simmons is forging ahead boldly. We are on the rise and our aspirations are becoming our reality. With the clarity that comes with passion for the work we do, we carry our founding mission into today's world because Simmons was built for today to empower our students to pursue their life's work to become leaders in their chosen fields and apply their talents to addressing the world's most pressing problems, to become leaders in their communities and be the change they want to see. And we continue to do so in the face of unprecedented challenges in higher education today. Colleges and universities across the country are facing the prospect of steeply declining admissions as a result of a demographic, demographic cliff projected for 2026. Women-centered universities are uniquely challenged, and many have closed their doors in the last few decades. We have gone from 300 women's colleges in the United States to less than 30 today. Rather than deter us, these challenges have intensified our resolve to deliver on our promise to our students by focusing on the student experience and leveraging our resources to be competitive. One Simmons, is our vision for the future, where our campuses are combined, our science and library facilities are state of the art, and every corner and alcove of our space welcomes students to convene. A campus that is collaborative, vibrant, accessible, and inclusive to our entire community, not just our resident undergraduate students, but our commuters, our graduate students, both in person and online, and our faculty and staff. Our vision is a campus that provides opportunities for our community to experience all aspects of the educational journey and to put our students squarely at the center of the Simmons world. Simmons aspires to be a student-centered university where the student experience is foundational to what we do. One Simmons is the physical embodiment of that goal with new classrooms and lab spaces welcoming spaces for study and collaboration, spaces that promote wellness and mindfulness, and eventually reimagined dining facilities, competitive athletic and fitness facilities, and modern residences, One Simmons will, be, will bring the best to our students. Now, One Simmons has been in the planning stages for nearly 10 years. We didn't do these renderings for today. Um, and its execution has been broken into three phases. We have completed the first two, two of those phases already. Phase one was what we called the enabling phase, which started just as the pandemic was shutting down the world. This first phase activated previously underused spaces throughout the campus to allow for more student engagement in gathering spaces, saw lighting and finishes, up, finishes upgraded, and brought all of our buildings up to ADA and code compliance. Almost simultaneously, we began executing on phase two, the creation of our new science center and library. We completed a gut renovation of Lefevre in the west wing of the main college to create new state-of-the-art lab facilities, a 30-bed simulation center for nursing and health sciences, research space, offices, and a more vibrant and collaborative library with group study rooms, flexible seating, and quiet study areas for all students. With over 50% of our students in the STEM sciences, it is imperative that we have state-of-the-art science and health facilities that will prepare them to meet the demands of a modern world. Phase three, the final phase, is the Living and Learning Center, which we are here today to launch. It will be a 400,000 square foot building 
that will house a brand new NCAA compliant athletic and fitness center, a newly designed dining facility in, one, in 1,100 student rooms. It is the final jewel in the one Simmons crown. This project didn't happen overnight. As I mentioned earlier, it has taken us 10 years of planning and unrelenting execution to get to this point. Not even a worldwide pandemic hindered our march forward. The renderings in this room are a stunning example of the transformation of our campus, that the, of the transformation that our campus will be undergoing. One that is ready to meet the next generation of students. While we're talking a lot about bricks and mortar here today, to be clear, this is not about bricks and mortar. This is about investing in our students and in the future. It is about being able to recruit the best talent in the country. It is about making good on our promise to our students that we will prepare them to go out into the world to meet life's challenges. It is about leveraging our resources to invest in the Simmons of tomorrow. My father used to tell me growing up, you will never go further than your reach, so reach far. I have heard his voice saying those words my entire life and have tried to live by them. As chair of the Simmons Board of Trustees, I am here to tell you that we are reaching high and are committed to being a survivor. Simmons is both literally and figuratively putting a stake in the ground to ensure its future and its place in higher education. It's a bold move, but our students are bold, as you will see, and they deserve the best from us. Good morning, my name is Kaz Gebhardt. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a member of the class of 2025, and I study history and French. My mom is here too, and she's a class of 1982. She's sitting right over there. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up hearing the stories from my mom and her Simmons friends, who are still close family friends to this day, about their time at Simmons. I've heard about the traditions, May Day, dorm teas, late nights at the library. And now that I'm here and living in the dorms myself, when she visits, the stories I hear are, well, let's just say it's hard to picture her in those moments sometimes. <laughs> As a legacy student, you are constantly living between the past and the present, which is why I was drawn to work on the Simmons Memory Project, a project designed to study the history of the residential campus and foster public awareness of the life and breadth of the experiences here, ensuring it is forever etched in our campus history. With the new Living and Learning Center, a lot of students and alumni were worried about losing that vital piece of our history. Us at the project have been talking with administration, as well as with the interior design architects, about ways to incorporate this history into the new building. For me, it's been bittersweet. The Res Campus is something I have such a personal connection to between me and my mom. Then I think about the coming generations that will grace this campus. I realize the new building is going to be a wonderful addition to our community. There are so many groups here on campus, such as queer communities, that have grown on res and impact the wider community as a whole. As a trans student myself, I look forward to the LLC creating a space for students to connect not only over shared experiences, but over our differences as well, all while dining, studying, and living under our roof. Plus, I'm comforted by the fact that our tower will be taller than Emmanuel's tower. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it to one central campus is bringing it home to Simmons. It will strengthen our traditions. We are one of the few schools left in the country that still celebrates May Day. It's been around here since 1912 and has always taken place on Res Campus. But bringing it to the main campus in future years will bring it to the full community, involving commuter students, graduate students, and the wider Simmons community as a whole. I may be bittersweet over losing our picturesque little campus, but then I think about the Simmons community strengthening itself, and I know it's our way forward, resilient and determined. I was driven to Simmons because of the mission set forth by our founder, John Simmons, the commitment to preparing students for their future careers. 
I remember sitting in my very first class and thinking, I don't know how to do college. Then I sat with my professor and she helped me figure out how academics work here and it all came together. The professors here have been beyond phenomenal about helping me achieve my goals. I've done research with them and I feel comfortable coming to them with any question I may have. The faculty here are so incredibly passionate about what they do and have connected me to countless opportunities. For example, this past spring, I worked on a project in conjunction with a faculty member in the Boston City Archives on the history of Boston women's voters in the late 1880s to the early 1920s. Additionally, this summer, I was a research fellow in the SURPASS program, a program specifically designed for undergraduate students to pursue independent research with a faculty mentor. I researched early American masculinity using President John Quincy Adams as a case study. I've worked with the Massachusetts Historical Society digitizing his papers for several years now, including over 15,000 pages of his diaries. He wrote everything from details of his public life to the most intimate details of his personal life and his innermost thoughts. And for me, he was a perfect example to conduct this research. If you want to study queer history like I do, it's and how people transgressed the boundaries of their society, it's important to find a baseline of what that society looked like at that time. For me, this research helped me establish that baseline so that I can go forward in my future research and learn how people transgress those boundaries. I planned to get my master's after I graduate Simmons, and I do hope to continue here in the dual archives and, math and history master's program. I actually became interested in this program through my work in the memory project and all the many hours I spent working in the truly wonderful Simmons archives. Who knows, maybe I'll still be on campus to experience the Living and Learning Center when it opens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine Paragas, and I'm a member of the class of 2026. My journey to Boston was a lengthy one, beginning in the Philippines, where I was born and raised. When I was 12 years old, my family moved to Los Angeles, California, in search of better educational and livelihood opportunities. It was during my high school years that my college counselor saw something special in me, a first-generation Filipina immigrant and recommended I apply for Simmons, specifically for the Cotson Scholarship. With hope and determination, I filled out the application, and here I am. I was first captivated by the school because of its location in the Longwood Medical Area and the opportunities that might pose. And the more I learned about Simmons, the more I understood the breadth of opportunities through its STEM program. All that I was working toward furthering my education aligned. I am a public health major under the pre-med track in a place that will help me reach my goal, to become a family medicine physician. My unwavering determination to excel in everything I do is fueled by my family's personal journey. When my younger brother was diagnosed with autism at the age of three, our family came together to provide him with the support that he needed. As his older sister, I juggled my high school studies during the day with taking care of him at night, feeding him his meals and accompanying him to his therapy sessions on weekends. While achieving good grades in school was satisfying, the true joy came from seeing the smile on my little brother's face. He'd run to me when I returned from classes, and as I did my homework, he'd be right by my side, happily eating the food I cooked for him. When asked about my dream, it's a simple one, to bridge the gap in health inequity. That's why I chose Simmons. Our experience with the American healthcare system in my family, particularly through my brother, highlighted the issue of health inequity. I saw similar patterns of healthcare access being tied to financial status back in the Philippines, where people were already struggling to make ends meet and healthcare bills only added to their burdens. My personal experiences have driven me to seize every opportunity available on this campus. Inspired by my family and by my brother, I am working on a research project focused on studying autism genetics. 
I aim to contribute to understanding the genetic origins of autism across generations, answering questions not only in my mind, but also in the minds of families with loved ones who have ASD. I'm also honored to serve as a Bonner community leader, working with local Boston community organizations for four years. I've been paired with Fenway Health, a local federally qualified health center where I work as an outreach intern. I'm, act I'm actually actively engaged in various health equity initiatives. I'm leading a vaccine equity project assessing the confidence that colleges of the Fenway students have in the COVID-19 vaccine. Every day, I experience the intersection of my classroom education with real community problems, which strengthens my personal mission to address issues of health inequity. Beyond academics, I'm committed to staying engaged within the Simmons community. I also serve as a resident assistant. A lot, this, this role is particularly meaningful because it enables me to help build a sense of community and, and advocate for my peers. This also allows me to collaborate and connect with my fellow residential students. I wouldn't be the person I am today without the unwavering support of my family back in Los Angeles and the incredible support system I've found here in Boston. Simmons has become my second home. I am profoundly grateful to the university for recognizing my potential and for the opportunity and support I've received from the tight-knit community that Simmons fosters. Every day, I am empowered to be the best version of myself, knowing I am surrounded by fellow students and faculty who consistently give their all. Thank you. Thank you, Kaz and Justine. Hearing your stories reminds me of why I'm here. The enduring legacy of those who came before us and the commitment of all of you our students, present and future. Let me tell you a bit about my own journey to Simmons because I'm not a graduate of Simmons. I was part of the last class of women admitted to Radcliffe before she closed her doors as an independent college and became part of Harvard. I often say that I was an alumna in search of an alma mater and Simmons adopted me. <laughs> my connection with Simmons began in 1984 when as a young associate at Goodwin Proctor, I was asked to work on a legal project for Simmons. I have never left. Why am I still here nearly 40 years later? I have stayed because I believe in Simmons' mission. I believe the world needs Simmons. I believe the world needs more Simmons women prepared for leadership in their life's purpose because when Simmons leads, the world is better. If not for the extraordinary commitment of our faculty to our students in their development, none of our aspirations could be realized. Our faculty play a very special role at Simmons. They are personally committed to our students and their success to a degree that I have never seen or experienced before. Nearly one third of our undergraduates are Pell eligible and the vast majority receive some form of aid, whether merit or need based. If not for many of you in this room, who so generously contribute to our Simmons scholarships, including the Kotzen Scholarship, we could not provide access to many talented students. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all for your generosity. Hi, I'm Lauren Del Vecchio, a Simmons alumna. I loved my time at Simmons. I'm originally from Southern California, but I always knew that I wanted to go to school on the East Coast. I looked at a lot of schools and was recruited by Coach Brooke to go to Newberry College, but that didn't feel like the right fit, and so I turned it down. Then Coach Brooke came to Simmons, and she called me up one day and said, hey, I think you're going to be interested in this school. So I visited, and as soon as I stepped on campus, I knew this was where I was meant to be. This campus is full of strong, independent, goal-oriented women not afraid to speak their minds. I came from a pretty closed-minded community, and all of a sudden, I was on campus with people who listen and respect the opinions of others. It was also the first time that I had powerful women in my life, in terms of my education. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> this campus, this is where I found my voice, and it was empowering. 
This is also where I found my community, my lifelong friends, my team, and my mentor, Coach Brooke. I loved, oh, in fact, I am now one of the softball team's assistant coaches. <laughs> I loved my classes at Simmons and the challenges that came with them. I was a graphic design major and the courses were rigorous. My classmates were so insanely talented that really set a high bar. It made me a better designer. And though I knew it at the time, it wasn't until I graduated that I could fully appreciate how well my professors prepared me for the professional world. Today I have my dream job as a graphic designer for a marketing agency and I love it. But my heart is still with this campus. I'm excited about the new Living and Learning Center. It's going to be special. It's going to make its mark on Boston. It's going to say, this is Simmons, and we're not going anywhere. I'm proud of that. I want those that follow us, yes. <laughs> I want those that follow to have the best, be the best. I'm proud of who we are and what we continue to accomplish. Building on our past, strengthening who we are. It's what we do. Actually, that sounds like the story of my softball team, the Sharks. It still feels like yesterday, my senior year. We were nearing the end. Uh, we had a great start in Florida. That's our spring break start to the season. We play 10 games in six days. We were nearing the end of the week, and we knew we had it this season. It was going to be our season. The conference title that had eluded us it was going to be ours. We all felt it. That was March of 2020. <laughs> and then we got the news. Our season was ending in Florida. We had one day, two games left, and it was over. That conference title, gone. That last morning was tough. It's hard to pinpoint all the emotions. There were tears and disbelief. But we got to the field, and that's where we, as a team, met the moment. We piled into the dugout with a fierce determination that we would leave it all out on the field. Those two games would be ours. We played hard and won the first. Nearing the end of the second game, it was tied and we went into extra innings. My team was screaming in the dugout. We were so close, the energy was so high. <laughs> Our eyes were glued to the hitter and then it happened. A walk-off sacrifice fly ball to left field and we won the game. <laughs> As a team, we rushed the field and dogpiled my teammate. We ended that week eight and two. It was then the best start to any season in program history. My softball career was over. But I love that for some, there was always next year and they would get the job done. <laughs> I remember hearing about that game. The following year was my first Simmons softball season. I'm Jordan Rubin, class of 24. I'm a nursing major and student athlete. Softball, obviously. I've always played sports, sometimes three at once. I was always competing against my older brother and his friends, so my competitive journey started early. And honestly, it never let up. But the first time I picked up a bat, I fell in love with softball. And I knew I wanted to play in college. I didn't know I was looking for a women-centered education. It definitely wasn't a factor in the early days, but I wanted to get the best education possible, and Simmons was my number one choice. I did more overnight visits than anyone else, and I went to the recruitment camps they offered. I saw Coach Lauren playing at one of those, and I thought, I want to be just like her. When we finally played our first full season after COVID, we were ready to finish what that 2020 team started. There were a couple of fifth years who were committed to the conference win, but we had 10 freshmen. All of a sudden, we were the really young team in the conference. I'm Tegan Buckley, and I'm a class of 26 finance and marketing major, and I was one of those freshmen. It was a lot of pressure coming into a collegiate team and a team that expects to win it all. We didn't know what to expect of ourselves, and we went into every game just thinking, win one game at a time. And in the spring, we went to Winter Haven for our preseason. We played really hard that week. Out of 10 games that we played, we won four and we lost six. We ended our time in Florida with a really tough loss, which was not how we wanted to go out. But we knew we had to work really, really hard to get where we wanted for the start of the spring season. 
we regrouped in the spring. It was definitely a transformative year on and off the field. The switch between high school and college is not always easy. There's a lot more work that needs to be put in, put in outside the classroom, but it helped that we all did it as a team. I was constantly in the library making sure I was on top of my work and doing what I needed to do, and meeting up with my teammates in the study rooms always helped. Since my first year here, I've seen the transformation on campus. I love having all of the buildings on one campus connected in some way. The science building is beautiful, including the simulation, the labs, and the state-of-the-art mannequins. It's amazing. As a nursing major, this is really important for me. Being here at Simmons, having the women-centered experience as the foundation of my nursing career, it just feels right. It's a really hard major. Your classmates all want the same thing, but we're all learning together and supporting each other. I feel like I have a team on and off the field, which gets me back to our season. The team worked really hard. We put our all into every practice, every game, with the motto, one game at a time. All of the hard work we put in helped us keep our eye on the goal, to raise that cup. There was just a point where we all gelled. We held each other accountable and learned how to give and take good criticism. And it worked. We made it to conference, and now we had a job to do. It was game day. We were playing LaSalle. We were on the field. It started off with a perfect bunt to get on base, followed by my double to get her home. Scoring that first run was key, key to building the momentum and energy we needed for the rest of the game. The first years definitely stepped up, with some of them hitting their first collegiate home runs during the game, which helped secure the lead. It was nerve wracking and I was just trying to stay calm. Right before I went up for my first at bat, my teammate ahead of me came up to me and told me, take a deep breath, just swing at the first pitch. It's been a strike all day. Mind you, it was not a strike, by the way. <laughs> but thankfully, I listened anyways, because that would be my first collegiate home run. <laughs> From then on, the momentum continued. Our fielders worked really hard to back up our pitchers, while our hitters worked hard to get on base and score those runners. Everything clicked. It came down to the last out, a foul ball to first base. We won. For the first time in Simmons softball history, we became GNAC champs. We, we raised, raised the cup. <laughs> walking up to this theme song. <laughs> it's intimidating, right? And our opponents feel it every time. Good morning, I'm Erica Schuling, Director of Athletics and Recreation. Listening to Lauren, Jordan, and Tegan, I was transported back to May of this year. Sitting among many of their parents, siblings, and other loved ones, I leapt out of my seat, screaming with pride. My eyes filled with tears, and I could barely catch my breath. It is a moment I will never forget. I wasn't alone. The entire set of bleachers was full of Simmons fans embracing one another. There were tears of joy, and everyone was taking pictures to capture this unforgettable moment. Today, I am reminded that building a home for the softball program at Daly Field truly made a difference. It provides a consistent place for the team to learn and grow together. Hearing the excitement from alums, parents, and former coaches about the positive impact a state-of-the-art facility has had on the program reinforces the importance of investing in our future. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to create a new and improved home for more of our sharks. The Living and Learning Center is not just a construction project. It represents a commitment to the heart and soul of the future of Simmons. I can picture it now, the students enjoying meals together, then heading to the gymnasium to cheer on our volleyball team as they beat our Fenway rival, Emmanuel. <laughs> or maybe some are heading up to the open door, outdoor, outdoor space on the wellness floor to chat about their day or spend some time in meditation, maybe even taking part in a yoga class in one of our fit studios. As the Fenway community passes by on Louis Pasteur Avenue, they will be able to capture a glimpse of our pool. Looking through the glass windows, they may see a Fit at Simmons instructor teaching water aerobics. If they are early risers, they will catch a glimpse of our student athletes training hard, working towards personal bests, and a chance at capturing another conference championship. 
Last year's swim and dive squad earned 12 gold medals at the championship meet. And Carly Quinlan was named GNAC Rookie of the Year for the conference. The amazing success stories of our student athletes go far beyond their competitive arenas. The student athletes earned a cumulative 3.58 GPA last year. This is incredibly impressive as many are juggling full academic course loads, internships, practicums, and part-time jobs, all with the challenging schedules for team training and competition. Some folks might be thinking, how is this even possible? There is a natural support system connecting our student athletes to our campus resources. We also have coaching staff that shows genuine care and compassion and promotes meaningful connections among teammates. It is that feeling of being a part of something bigger than themselves. It is similar when Justine speaks about the impact of her personal experience with her brother, leading her here to pursue her passions to ensure greater equity for all in the future. I believe that the Living and Learning Center will be a physical space that encourages a similar feeling for all students. I'm eager to work with colleagues and students to reimagine opportunities for community building and cross collaboration among the various student organizations. It will be a space where lasting friendships are made and a space to find comfort during challenging, excuse me, challenging times. Our institution has a rich history woven with traditions that have stood the test of time. The photos of May Day shared by Kaz and the Simmons Memory Project on Instagram spanning over a century are a perfect example. These traditions connect us to generations that came before, reminding us of our roots, our values, and the sense of belonging that defines our campus. From the ruckus cheers at sporting events to the impressive applauds at graduation ceremonies, these traditions have bound us together in a unique tapestry of pride. They are the threads that link our past to our present and forming a bridge to our future. They tell stories of resilience, unity, and the enduring spirit of our community. But campus pride isn't just about looking back. It's also about embracing the future. It's about the innovative, vibrant, and inclusive traditions that we create today. It's about fostering an environment where every student, regardless of their background, can contribute to the ongoing story of this campus. As we stand at this intersection of history and innovation, let us remember that traditions are not set in stone. They evolve, adapt, and grow just as we do. So let us continue to cherish, cherish our time-honored customs while fearlessly forging new ones that reflect the diverse and dynamic community we are becoming. In celebrating Campus Pride, we honor the legacy of those who came before us and pave the way for those who will follow. Let us cherish our traditions, embrace change, and most importantly, stand united in the pride we feel for our remarkable campus. In closing today, I want to echo Regina's sentiments. This isn't about brick and mortar. This is about investing in our students and in our future. Thank you for coming this morning and thank you to Kaz, Justine, Lauren, Jordan, and Tegan for sharing your stories with us. Go Simmons!